Hello everyone, I am the Wacky Gamer of KJC Esports and we are joined by Yaba of RD Astra Luna Esports with regards to the VST Philippines Stage 3 Week 3 Playoffs. Hello Yaba. Hello, thanks for having me again KJC and uh, shout out to the Wacky Gamer for giving me this <laughs> interview. <laughs> so it, it's, it's been a while since uh, the Week 3 but hopefully you still remember all of the stuff that went on. But before we talk about the VST playoffs itself, uh, everyone in chat, on Twitch chat and even like uh, some of my friends or, and even the casters were wondering, what does RD stand for in the team <laughs> name? <laughs> It's it's actually a really funny story because when we were trying to think of a team name, this goes back to Red Bull Campus Clutch, wherein we formed this team. So uh, I don't know if you know the rules of Campus Clutch, pero hindi na kailangan straight from everyone from the same college. So it was a Campus Clutch of like you know you can form a hybrid. So we started as WUC, which was woke up chief. Parang homage to the Phoenix line. Then um, we went to, you know, because we uh, fell short, we were second place, so we didn't have to represent the Philippines. We were like, oh, let's change name. So we went to RD because we said, oh, maganda yun. Parang when you see it on um, Valorant, people will say, ano kaya yung RD? Exactly. <laughs> Pero tayo rin. We, we don't really have a nice name for it. It just means run it down. So, mm, okay. it, it just run it down. Because that's our motto. Parang whenever we're overthinking strats or overthinking our, our opponent, we're like, ah, let's just run it down. Like, let's just enjoy it. <laughs> let's just play it okay. like bugs. Yeah. Okay. So, so that, I think, that's the reason. Yeah, I think that answers everyone's questions. Because I think some were like, we're checking Facebook. Oh, it might mm. mean this and all that. And also for the viewers out there that don't know the Red Bull Campus uh, tournament, it's a uh, it was a tournament based for only uh, students. If I remember, university, if I recall. Yeah, collegiate. And then, uh, yeah, collegiate. And then it's all around the world. So we had qualifiers for the Philippines, and uh, it was a lot of teams, if I recall. Yes, yes. And then now moving on to uh, talking about playoffs, you guys were trying to make it into a playoff since stage one. How did it feel that you know during the last stage, the last attempt, uh, you know, it week three, the last week of playoffs as well, you guys finally made it. Uh, how did you guys feel? Yeah, to sum it up, talaga, it's really the stars aligned because. Um, I mean, of course, you've been covering this for so long. You know how hard it is to just reach the playoffs, just reach the the streamed event, kumbaga. And yun nga, like there are a bunch of weekends wherein you know you allot all your time, and then you focus on it, and then we scrim. Um, my team, I was in charge of the scrims, talaga. So we would really try our best to at least scrim three times a week for those um, stages. But for the final stage. Um, we did not scrim the whole week before. We changed our whole practice towards this final week. Na I think we were getting burnt out. I think we were just, you know, feeling plateau like we were plateauing. We we felt like maybe we weren't good enough. Like all these like overthinking concepts parang baka baka we're just not gonna win talaga. So you know, we just we just chill we just relax and entering into stage three it's kind of funny because we went in with a completely different lineup because you know that we're six people and um this time see our our main do our main jet grossoff he wasn't available that weekend so we kind of had to adjust so we went full lg lg terra which is our ateneo team so we brought in squami who is a sentinel main then we put Mateo on the list. Then we just, you know, because of, I guess, the amount of um, months we've already played with each other, we just based it off of that. So going into that week, there were really no expectations. So I guess there was less pressure and it, it paid off because our bracket, so that bracket released mga 40 minutes before game time. And then we saw, oh my God, the bracket was stacked. <laughs> so we saw... Yeah. Zeal, we saw Atlas, and we saw um, there Sun was Sparks, another if team. I to Sun Sparks, Sun Sparks was sorry, uh, we didn't play against Sun Sparks. We played against another team, mm. but 
I I forget the team, but it was a mm. close game also. But yeah, we we went against pre- a pretty stacked uh, uh, bracket, <laughs> but it paid off. So um, because you also guys uh, are all studying in school. So how how did you like fit in three screams? Like weren't you guys busy with like academics and then you you know of course ev- everyone wants to win, so you have to put in the effort. So how how does that dynamic work? Yeah, I think para siyang student athlete life, I'd say. So mm-hmm. same same style. Let's say like before the pandemic, if you were UAAP or something, you really have time for that after school. So the same way we'd sacrifice our let's say eight to eleven PM uh almost every day to try and have a fixed time to really scrim together and you know, get our play style going. Because iba talaga versus playing in competitive Competitors is not the same um, style. It's not as fun, also for like versus five v fives. In my opinion, sorry, but yeah, I think it's just setting the time for it. And um, actually, it's kind of perfect for for us. Cause me, Blimey, Squami, we're we we were seniors, so we are already graduated. We're so we're not officially graduated yet. We graduate in October, but. We're, we passed our requirements now, so we kind of got to focus on Valorant's yeah. final week playoffs because I know fun employed pa we're enjoying and then we're, we're gonna focus on this week yeah and then um, uh, do you guys have a coach or is it just like you guys as well just uh, helping each other out trying to figure out how to improve and all that so we have we have um, a mutual friend who kind of acts as our coach in a way wherein Medyo Valorant guru talaga siya. Siya talaga yung yung Sova na naglalaro sa Diamond, pero alam niya lahat ng lineup. So, he's that guy who really studies it. So, he made us um an Excel sheet wherein he he kind of uh, went through the best strats of Sentinel stuff like that. And we've kind of um sat down with him for a couple of hours before just to go down uh he he calls it his strat book wherein <laughs> It's certain things that we can just pick wherever we need to and then uh, adjust to it because we're not necessarily a team with strats. I wouldn't call us a team with like heavy strats. We're really more of play calling and adjusting to info during the game. Kind of like a very slow paced CSGO style. So we get the info and then we just adjust and then based off I guess, you know, being a fan also of like the NA scene and other things like that, we kind of try and copy in our own ways and then of course you guys were prepping up and then you guys uh, are the first ones to also see the brackets for the playoffs and for the quarterfinals it was sv empire you know people were thinking uh this team has been top four for the past week one and week two and then you guys are facing them on the first you know uh your first game was there any pressure on you or the team against them uh, for personally speaking, I felt the pressure. I knew what SV was. I knew all the build up that was going towards them. They were the favorites to, you know, win it all, stuff like that. And they were really on a hot streak. Like um, a lot of us, you know, are friends on them on Valorant, so we can see the history. And then wow, like SV in V, like all of these guys are really playing well. They're at their peak. So, you know, taking into that, uh, taking that into account, we, you know, we. There's pressure because it's finally in the stage wherein, to be honest, we're all dreaming about hitting, but we never thought we'd actually hit, diba? Right? So, I think it was just more of like the pressure of, um, you know, showing up that day and uh, trying not to get stomped because uh, we always, we, we just, we just want to show people like, I, I know there's that humble side, but there's also that ego wherein, you know that kaya naman like we we know that we can show put up a fight you know everyone we everyone's on the same level at that point because we're in the playoffs like not to sound cocky but um the team kind of proved that we can you know hang with the big boys you know our bracket was no joke it wasn't uh it wasn't a lucky bracket as some people would say uh we really had to um show or we had to step up to get to that position so facing sv we kind of thought of that, 
thought of it as okay, it's just another team, na lang. But at the same time, when when it's like you're you're waiting in the lobby and stuff like that, you'll feel the pressure definitely. And it kind of showed in our first half <laughs> because our first half started really slow. It kind of looked like oh, like even the casters were saying it kind of looked like it was you know automatic SV. Mm-hmm. But you know once we kind of settled down with, in terms of the emotions and in terms of um just just uh, feeling things out because a, a lot of people don't realize for a team like us we actually have zero scrim experience with philippine teams or we've never played them in other tournaments the only thing we have to adjust is like playing them in competitive so we don't have that kind of history between us and stuff like that unlike let's say if you were um playing for an org early on you know you had those different qualifiers you had those different um sponsored events now you're playing against these guys now so you kind of have a feel for them uh, versus us we had zero feel we're we're really jumping into uncharted territories as some people call it yeah but i i think you know uh, to those people that say you know you guys got lucky People should know that during the like qualifiers for like these TPH, when you reach like the later brackets, you will see that uh, those teams are stacked. Most of like the teams that make <laughs> it into playoffs are those same people that you see in those brackets itsel- uh, right, itself. Right. So I think it's it's an achievement, and it you can totally Thank be you. you know confident about how you guys made it to the playoffs. And you did mention about the slow start on that first game of Haven. Uh, for the viewers, um, what happened was on the first half, defending half, uh, oh. yeah, on the first half, yeah, it was, yeah. you guys only got two rounds and you know, that's just three rounds left. Uh, and technically after the switch of the half, that's the most important part of the half because you have pistol, then you have the, yeah. the anti-eco and then the first gun round. So. It, it could have gone in the favor of SB Empire just from the first pistol round itself. But you guys, you know, almost came back 13-10. I think he, everyone was like amazed. Like, wow, how do you come back from like a 10-2? Yeah. <laughs> very, very... Yeah. It was very, very close to going to overtime. Like, maybe like 10 seconds in the clock or something like that. Just to add to what you're saying. Like, and I think it kind of showed, um, I say, the specialty of our team wherein we have really good shot callers. So our IGL is also our duelist, see Flex, mm-hmm. and you know we really respect him in terms of um, what he calls, and I think that's the dynamic of the team. What changed from, I guess, the earlier stages of VCT qualifiers versus now was, I think, just the trust factor of the team, wherein um, people just trusted na if you're holding short, isa na lang yung hold ng short, the other person will focus on wherever you're looking and. I think that's sometimes what happens when you know when you lose rounds, you start um, overhelping or adjusting too much because you feel like your other teammate won't be able to do it. But I think uh, leading into the playoffs, uh, again, like I said earlier, the stars aligned, and I think the trust was just there. And then we were just on a roll. We were peaking. We were confident. We were doing whatever we wanted to do, and we realized that. The same strats we pull off, let's say, in a collegiate game, we can still do in the top seeded games because, you know, we can do it. Like, we're used to it. We, we, we've done this a million times. <laughs> yeah, some, some teams like fall under pressure and think they have to, like, yeah. think of something new, but, you know, you can just stick to your roots in a way. Yeah. And then, um, after, sadly, the first uh, game did go your way. And then in between, before the game two, there was like a really long pause. Really, uh, really long. long. <laughs> yeah. yeah um, if you're allowed to share, of course, uh, what was the concern or issue that happened during that break? Yeah, let's just say one of my teammates' internet providers was not doing its job. So, <laughs> like I said, up to that point, I think the stars aligned, but on the day itself, it was just, I guess, honestly, it's just really unlucky. So, uh, Flex had connectivity issues, he couldn't launch his game. So, during that time, because people were starting to disconnect in the lobby, we decided to go to Split. Because Split is Grosso's best map. And mm-hmm. as the sub, we really wanted to kind of um, cater to what this five is capable of so you know i i I know split isn't necessarily the best map choice of a lot of people but 
I feel like when we have um, Grossoff in the team and we, when we have that certain comp, kaya naman yung split. Like it's it's uncomfortable for everyone, but we have a certain comf uh, we a certain comfort when we're playing that style. So we kind of took a gamble. Uh, we were kind of thinking ascent at first. Personally, I would have wanted to play ascent more than split, but that's that's not the team's choice, de ba? So. Yeah, I think it was just more of to try and adjust to what the cards were dealt with. So we went with split. So yes, it was, I think, 13-8. It wasn't as good as a performance, we'd say, as Haven. But uh, yeah, I think it was just really unlucky. But we really tried to, you know, think of something that uh, we could offer differently versus you know what S S V would be comfortable with or something. So we went to split. And and uh you know it's it happens. Uh, it's the Philippines. Yeah. Internet won't won't go your way at most of the time. Um but uh you had that sub and so that means you had like and you got you were also saying before that you guys had different lineups and all that. But uh do you guys practice uh intentionally using the six whole six man roster or is it just really for emergencies uh how does the dynamic of your roster work yeah so technically our six man was really made for emergencies because um squammy who's the sentinel that uh played in the the week that we actually qualified he's not really like in i wouldn't say he's not into valo anymore but he's not really in that trying to compete professionally anymore mm -hmm. so we went uh so we have grosso blimey uh mateo me and flex and that's the group that we stuck with since um the the other tournament the red bull so that's the five but uh going in again to the the weekend wherein we qualified and we beat all the top teams that was with squammy so going into the playoffs we made a decision to you know, keep Squammy in the rotation because, you know, he earned it. Like, we we played a certain way and it worked versus all the other playoffs where some, somehow it wasn't working. So we just tried to, you know, if it's not broken, don't fix it. <laughs> that lineup, right? So yeah, I'd say it's for emer emergencies, but we're all really comfortable playing with each other and we're, we're all, we're like, we're all friends. Like, we've all played against each other with each other like we've all like went up the scene in college you know we all picked up the game at the same time so we're really we're really a, a band of brothers talaga. so i think that's what's really nice about this team because like if there's a concern everyone will air it out you know we're all we're all on discord i guess like 24 7 like the funny thing is the first time that we all met was for the drug testing for VCT playoffs. So <laughs> the first time all of us were in a room together yeah. was to submit requirements for the playoffs. So uh -huh. the rest of the time was really for in Discord and uh, in Valorant. So uh, just so that uh, the viewers won't be surprised by like that testing. Um, I think it's for the is it the games and boards? Uh... Yes, yes. It, it's yeah, not actually. for Valorant. It's for like the. It's like your for the license, government purpose yeah. license, yeah, like an esports license. Right. Yeah, for so those who it, don't know, the, the viewers may sorry, sorry. wonder. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, but, they don't yeah, so... drug test you. Yeah, they, they so are, or BCT. they were probably. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it wasn't BCT. It was yeah. it was the games and boards yeah. amusement who uh, handles like the different esports. Uh, you know, yeah, just it's for like the cash things. prize and stuff like yeah. that. You know, just so you're registered. <laughs> And no, they're not drug testing you to see if you're on Adderall, <laughs> if you're you're cracked, you're really good at the game. But yeah, so yeah, that's uh, the reason why we all met up. And then uh, with that dynamic of like Squammy on the Sentinel, um, you you have been playing the controller since stage one. That's the I think one of the really consistent ones, and it's mostly on Omen. Like I checked PLR, um, you played I think only. Astra one three times during your span of stage one to stage three. Mm. Um, does Omen just fit your playstyle and the team's playstyle, or you know, what's your opinion on ha using Astra? Yeah, so at the start, I really loved Astra. There was a time wherein um, they didn't nerf her yet, so there, <laughs> you know, the stars would be placed 
literally when the round would start, right? So the stars would be placed. And then now, after the update, it's like a three second delay. So you can only place the stars after three seconds in the start of the round. So just because of that, when I was trying to practice Astra with the way the team plays, I feel like I was playing too slow or I, w I wasn't really like doing the things the team wanted me to do on Astra versus how comfortable I am on Omen because um, you know, even on my Facebook page, like I really like playing Omen. Like that's that's my comfort pick. So it's kind of going back to how even on VLR it shows. Whenever we're really trying to relax, not overthink things, you know, comfort pick, best pick. So I go Omen. But um, there was there were times that I was really playing Astra on like all maps. But I really think if um, we did end up playing Bind on any of the games, then I would have gone Astra. So the reason why also that um, VLR shows that I was on Omen was because most of our games recently were on Haven, and on Haven that's 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 the map that I really play Omen, Haven Ascent, and then um, sometimes Astra on Split, sometimes Omen on Split. It really depends, but yeah, it, it really I think in terms of team's play style, Omen really fits because it makes me um, the second guy. To trade versus on Astra, a lot of times me and Blimey, who's our Sova, would be a bit far behind wherein our duel is already inside. So it was more of like play style wherein, at least when I'm on Omen, I'm I'm flashing them in, I'm second in, I can TP into side to trade and stuff like that. And then um, sadly, you know, uh, the team's run during week three playoffs ended in the quarters itself. But you know, you guys were able to put up a fight with SPM, yeah. you know, that comeback during game one. And then, you know, we even got them the sweating. Club... <laughs> they were sweating. <laughs> so, uh, what's, the, what's the plans for, you know, this offseason as there's most likely no more VCTPH events for this year? Yeah. Uh, I love this because. Uh, in terms of off season, it's kind of nice that let's say eighty percent of our lineup is in collegiate, parin. So even if it's let's say the off season for most uh, pro players, there it's their season now. So right now they're playing for Academia, they're playing collegiate level, they're going against all the other top teams in the college. So we have Flex Mateo still in that scene, and um, Dippy is also one of our, you know. Seventh man lineup sub just in case you know we, like that group they're really playing right now they're um they're I wouldn't say it's an off season as well uh so yeah I think in terms of showing the team's potential I think we already did that and I think we already proved to ourselves mostly that okay we're we've let's stop overthinking that you know we shouldn't peak this we shouldn't peak that because you know they're they're a pro player. Because uh, we've proven uh, we can we can really make it this far, and it was really gratifying. Um, you know, it, it felt like a Cinderella story because of our journey from you, you know um, just you know picking up Valorant new game, being how young we are, and <laughs> next thing you know, the final qualifier for VCT. The only collegiate team to ever make it makes it, and you know we took down juggernauts while doing that. And it it's it's really nice to you know kind of be recognized on that stage because we're orgless, you know we're not we're not we're not um, pro players on contract. We're nothing like that. We're just a bunch of kids who are really passionate about this game and who take sacrifices as a group to try and play as a team and you know make things happen and you know it paid off and i hope um that shows not just you know not just us i hope it doesn't just show us but it shows the other people in the collegiate scene uh, you know if you really put your heart and your soul into this game as a five as a six whatever then the sky's the limit you can really improve in really short time and in terms of the team's plans for this off season like I said, some of them are in the collegiate scene, but you know, I think we're really looking forward to just continuing playing together because, um, like I said, the confidence is there now. We know what we're capable of. So, who knows, you know, if in the future there's an opportunity to 
uh, let's say get picked up by an organization then we'll really be happy and uh, be humbled to do that and really work for it but yeah for now all we can say is uh, we'll be online in Valorant <laughs> that, that's the safest thing I can say Okay, so for the new supporters that you guys gain from BCD, uh, from the playoffs, you know, if you know, uh, let's just say question mark first for VST 2022, or yeah. are you hoping that maybe somehow you guys could make it work? Yeah, for sure, we're gonna do our best to um, be there, but the question mark will be during that time, are we committed enough to? focus up and get to the playoffs again but for sure we're always gonna be playing either it's uh i don't want to say it's just for fun but we're really gonna be trying to play in a way that we're competing so this won't be the last you'll see we're not gonna be a one and done we're really gonna show that this is just a stepping stone because um months on months we've been improving months on months we've been placing in um from collegiate to the pro scene and we feel like you know just wait just just you wait just wait you know <laughs> we'll have more to offer and more to show and we're young and we're full of potential so i'm really glad mm-hmm. that you guys in the whole scene you know with the stream you got to see it naman yeah i i think you you showed everyone that you know um first time rd at least now we know run it down <laughs> and <laughs> That, now you know, you, know yeah. you, you you ran it down all the way from stage one and you know made it to stage three. So yeah. thank you for showing us uh, like a great uh, you know what R D Astra Luna Esports is made of and yeah. So thank you for also joining us yes. uh, in this interview. And shout out to uh, Astra Luna Esports uh, for you know kind of promoting us and sharing us like whenever we play, so they're gonna share us and yeah. Check them out as well. Those are those are my friends who are trying to start up a new um, esports group uh, scene there. So yeah, um, yeah, I'm just grateful for the opportunities that um, VCT Valorant and of course KJC. Thank you guys for uh, you know being interested in our story as well. No, no, uh, we're glad to share your story. So um, once again, I am the Wacky Gamer, and this was KJC Esports into the scene overtime with Yaba. Bye. Yeah.